The Pirate Queen of Ireland, Grace O'Malley, was a notorious and brutal Irish pirate and traitor who became leader of the ancient O'Malley clan. She butted heads with the British on multiple occasions, even beating Queen Elizabeth I. Although we don't know a lot about the legendary Pirate Queen, in this video I'll attempt to document her life and struggle against the British. Before we begin, I would like to note that a lot of the sources available on Grace O'Malley are either of English origin or folk tales. Her name was also spelt differently depending upon who you talk to. In order to streamline things, I'll simply be referring to her as Grace or Grace O'Malley. With that being said, take all the information here with a grain of salt. Born in 1530 in County Mayo, Ireland, to Owen and Maeve O'Malley, Grace would grow up around the ocean. Even as a young child, she accompanied her father on seafaring missions, which included piracy and trading excursions mostly to Spain, where she would become at least somewhat conversational in Spanish. There's a popular legend that when Grace was still young, she asked her father if she could accompany him on a trading expedition to Spain, but Owen said no. There are two versions of this legend I found, one of them being that she wasn't allowed because she was a woman, and the other because it was said her hair was too long and would get caught in the ropes. Regardless, it resulted in Grace cutting off her hair and gaining the nickname Grain O'Malley, or Grace the Bald. She was then let on the expedition. During the 16th century, as I'm sure a lot of you aren't really surprised about, misogyny was fairly common. Even though the Brehon laws confirmed that women weren't property, there were still societal expectations for women. Grace basically said fuck that and lived her life how she wanted to. As a result, she would gain immense respect and admiration from her people, especially the crew she sailed with. Her family's territory spanned modern-day Mayo County, plus or minus some territory. Upon her father's death, she assumed the role of chief of the name and all the land and responsibilities that came with it. Her first marriage was to heir to the chief of the name of the O'Farty clan, Donald O'Farty, in 1546. She had three children with him, Owen after her father, Maeve after her mother, and Merchid. It was said that her youngest son, Merchid, didn't listen to Grace and frequently beat his older sister, simply due to their sex. This is another example of how women of the era had to overcome sexism. It's also said that he defected to the British, so one can assume that he was a little bit of a prick. Anyways, in 1565, Donald was assassinated by members of the Joyce clan while hunting. The reason for his death was due to the long-standing dispute between the two clans about Cox Castle. Yes, it was really named Cox Castle. Shortly after Donald's death, the Joyces moved in to take Cox Castle, which was defended by Grace and her soldiers. The Joyces thought the battle would be easy, but they were absolutely obliterated by Grace and her garrison. In her honor, the castle was renamed to Hen's Castle. According to legend, after the death of her first husband, she allegedly took a shipwrecked sailor as her lover. The little love stint didn't last very long since he was also murdered by a rival clan known as Clan McCohen. Only two years after Donald's death, she married her second husband, Richard Brooke. They would have one son together named Tibbet. According to Irish legend, Tibbet was born during an attack on one of his mother's ships. They were initially losing the fight, but Grace rallied her men and destroyed the Algerian pirates who were attacking her ships. Allegedly, the two parties only agreed to a trial marriage, not a full-fledged marriage. As a result of the trial period coming to an end, Grace, allegedly, changed the locks on Richard's own castle. Apparently, this didn't really change anything, and he was still with Grace until his death in 1583. She attacked the McCoans again, taking their castle while they were praying. Attacking someone while praying or in a church was seen as rude and cruel, but this happened on a few occasions. If I didn't sound like a broken record already, according to legend, someone stole some of her property and hid in a church. She said that she wouldn't leave until he came out, so he tunneled out of the church and escaped. The monk that was working there broke his vow of silence to ridicule her for her actions. You know shit is serious when a monk has to break his long-standing vow of silence just to insult you. Troubles with the British were common for the O'Malley's. They were indiscriminate when it came to piracy, attacking Irish and British ships alike. Beginning in 1576, she started a legal process called Surrender and Regent with Lord Deputy of Ireland at the time, Sir Henry Sidney. A year later, some of her land was captured by the Earl of Desmond, along with Grace O'Malley herself. She was first imprisoned in Limerick, but was later moved to Dublin. Grace was released due to good behavior. 
It's speculated that the aforementioned Lord Deputy of Ireland, Sir Henry Sidney, aided in her release, owing to the two having good relations. However, it is more likely that Sir John Perrott, a British politician who objected to the brutal treatment of the Irish, played a more prominent role in her release. She was attacked by the British on her home island of Clare in March 1579. The attack failed spectacularly, leading to the withdrawal of the British forces from the island. Now on to the main villain of our story, Sir Richard Bingham. I love the name Bingham, I'm going to probably make fun of it a few times in this video, who was Lord of Connacht, which is a county in Ireland. Once he gained the position of Lord Connacht in 1584, he began a horrific campaign against the Irish. It was more akin to a conquest and looting than a peaceful assimilation project. Grace, obviously, didn't take too kindly and resisted Sir Richard Bingham's rule. In response, he killed Owen and captured and imprisoned Tibbet, Morrow, and her half-brother, Donald Piopa. Grace herself was again captured, however she was released. In June 1593, the legendary pirate queen then wrote to Queen Elizabeth I, protesting the treatment of her family and the blatant disrespect of her authority over her own territory. Sir Richard Bingham also wrote a letter to the Queen stating how horrible of a person Grace O'Malley was, famously stating that, Grace O'Malley is the nurse to all rebellions in the province for this 40 years. Grace's letter to the Queen eventually culminated in a meeting with her sometime that year. The two met at Greenwich Palace, with Grace bringing along some of her family members, and was accompanied by Sir Morrow O'Farty. Grace was given 18 questions known as the 18 Articles of Interrogate. I'm not entirely too sure what they are and what they contained. I really couldn't find any information on them. It is important to note that the meeting between the two renowned figures is really up for debate. What we do know about the meeting is largely based on legend and British bias. What we do know for certain, though, is that her son and half-brother were released from prison and was given her land and property back, and was also given some monetary compensation. Contrary to popular belief, the meeting was more than likely conducted in English, not Latin, as Anne Chambers points out, who I'll talk about in a minute. After the meeting, Grace went back to her lands and rebuilt her fleet. However, Sir Richard of Bingham, I hate his name. It sounds so funny. Like, what? <laughs> However, Sir Bingham still had a large bone to pick with her. Queen Elizabeth's ruling was that he should basically stop fucking around and that he should protect Grace's lands. He initially didn't do this, but reluctantly agreed when Grace threatened him. That doesn't mean he wasn't a royal pain in the ass, though. He frequently quartered troops on her ships and in the area she was in. At one point, he even had her attack her own kingsmen, who he said were in revolt, even though they most likely weren't. As a result, Grace O'Malley's power dwindled, leaving her poor and with an ever-diminishing domain. She petitioned to various British lords over the years, but little, if anything, came of it. Grace was an advocate against British rule over Ireland, obviously, and promoted fighting against Tyrone, a British puppet. Grace O'Malley died in 1603 at Rockfleet Castle and was buried at her family's resting place at the Clare Island Abbey. The exact date she died, how she died, and where she died, and where she is buried is all up for debate. However, 1603, Rockfleet Castle, and Clare Island Abbey are all commonly accepted. Grace's life is a mix of fact and legend, difficult to discern which is which when learning about her and her exploits. Her contemporary biographer, Anne Chambers, took on the challenge of trying to decode O'Malley's history. Chambers released two books on Grace O'Malley, one in 1979 called Grace O'Malley, The Biography of Ireland's Pirate Queen, 1530-1603, and a book about her son, Tibbet, called Shadow Lord, which was released in 2007. She also wrote several screenplays about Grace in her life. There's even talks of a mini-series about her. I highly recommend reading her book about Grace O'Malley. It is incredibly interesting, and it's a pretty good read. There are countless songs, pieces of literature, and plays that detail Grace's life. Too many for me to list in this video. However, I will briefly go over a few songs, books, and plays that talk about the legendary Pirate Queen. Patrick Pierce, an Easter Uprising leader, wrote the song, Oh Welcome Home, the Irish Republican version. In this version of the song, Pierce talks about Grace dispersing the foreigners, more than likely referring to the British. Another pretty interesting song about Grace is the 2015 song Grace the Bald by a Swedish band called Frantic Amber. They're basically a heavy metal band, which is pretty cool considering that Grace is Irish and a lot of the songs about her are Irish folk songs. 
When it comes to books, the majority, that I've seen at least, are nonfiction or historical fiction. Anne Chambers is perhaps the most notable author when it comes to literature on O'Malley. Other authors, such as James Joyce, who wrote the 1939 novel Finnegan's Wake, talks about grace in one of his chapters. Four plays, the most famous of them is simply called The Pirate Queen, which is based off the 1986 historical fiction novel called Grace, She King of the Irish Seas by Morgan Lillian. The show was last shown in 2020 in London. Needless to say, Grace O'Malley, both fact and legend, will live on for centuries to come. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you learned something new, please like and subscribe so more people can learn about military history. If you want to support what I do, please check out my Patreon page and eBay for some pretty cool perks and products. Thank you again, and I'll see you next time.